So, so, so you can see there. Uh, I would like to you, you know go over this table at least mentally to see when when they sort of shifting the upper and down of the symbol. It actually almost like a DCD to move uh, to move A B into B and uh, A uh, remainder of B. So that's how the complexity is uh, uh, reduced. So somehow every time we shift this way, there's a one essentially one bit was lost because it's computed as remainders. Okay. So 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 you can see that table essentially just governs the computation of Jacobi symbol. Okay. Uh, the proof actually was not very hard. It's mostly just done by uh, from the definition of Jacobi symbol and going through a proof by induction. Right. So they take out the sort of uh, 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 two times some number very seriously. Most, mostly they try to suck out a, as many two as possible in this thing. And uh, uh, the, the, the testing of prime I didn't mention in the class, Miller's algorithm, miller Ribbons, actually use uh, quite some motivation from such this. They basically also, when they look at a number, uh, odd number, they first get all the power of two odds. So then they argue, once you get power of two out, suddenly uh, the behavior become much more regulated. Okay. So, uh, so I, I will use uh, this part to briefly introduce a little bit of uh, number theory. And uh, I think we get a quite a strong hold of at least some basic property of number theory. And I just want to expand a little bit more. That will allow us uh, to uh, look at the next stage of probability encryption as well as uh, uh, through the random number generation with slightly better uh, examples. Okay. So, so we mentioned that uh, two things so far. One is uh, if a P is a prime, ZP star, we mentioned that it's a cyclic group. Right? So it actually can be produced either right at one, two, and the P minus one, or it can be Write as a t zero, g p minus two, for the unit g to the for such a thing, the unit g for such a thing, right? The cyclic representation, and uh, so one of the nice thing about this representation is it gave us a sense of uh, uh, so-called perfect squares, right? So so this immediately highlights that uh, the number of perfect squares, which means the even exponents. Is exactly half of those numbers. Right. So this immediately say that this whole domain can be reduced if you take out all, all, all even numbers, uh, an even uh, exponent or odd exponent. So this will give you quadratic residue and a quadratic non residue. Okay. So it give us uh, immediately the perfect squares and non perfect squares. And we knew each of those just 50%. So, so, not. Would you write under the first underline? Uh, Let me write better. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, they pieced out, right? Yeah. Yeah, after I had a little uh, back issues, I, I feel like I don't press my uh, hand as hard as. Uh, I'm writing a little bit more floaty, and that is actually making my handwriting worse. I guess when we write, uh, we used to write a lot, right? So our hands are very strong, right? We, we, we really push down the pen to, to write on papers. And gradually, we never write that anymore. And I feel like my board writing also. But with my back, I sometimes couldn't keep on writing, you know, mm -hmm. push it hard. Um, so, <laughs> but that's not an excuse of you can't mm -hmm. recognize. <laughs> uh, so 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 uh, so this quickly give us uh, this structure, and and to us it's very interesting because uh, this essentially provide us a mathematical representation of zero, and this gives us a mathematical representation of one, right? Because they're fifty percent each. For example, if I say produce a run, flip a random coin, I can also say randomly choose a number here and look for. Uh, with this perfect square on right? So this gives us some example of encoding bits. And there's many other ways to encode bits, 
for example, you give an average ask, are you bigger than the first half or second half? Or are you parity or not? Are you even number, odd number or not? Were you a perfect square or not? You can see they are all digital encoding of a single bit. Right? And most of the single encoding are nice too, in part because it gives you a, some, somehow an even uh, divide of representations. Right? And they come out handy sometimes because if we draw random ones, we can also use this to emulate Philip coin digitally. Okay? So so RSA actually brought us into a slightly more complex uh, uh, modulo, right? We, we, we have mostly study Zn star, which is equal to Z, P, and Q star. And by the Chinese remainder theorem, it's e we are equal to Z, P star, Z, Q star. So this is where the Chinese remainder theorem actually is very handy, not just computationally, but mostly I feel <coughs> just conceptually to, to look at what are the possible representation of numbers and what are possible structures within, uh, you know, model composite. Particularly, we, since we're dealing with uh, multiply of two primes a lot, it's probably good to look at a little bit of, of these structures. Okay. So, so, so what is this structure? So one thing, if you look at it from this pers particular perspective, so what when we write down this d p star d uh, q star, all we essentially write is basically say that every number in z n can be can be encoded by mod p and mod q, right? So, so, so here you have a coordinate, basically the first coordinate is mod p, second coordinate mod q. So this is your x. So every x belongs to the n star, it maps to this coordinates, x mod p and x mod q. And this uh, uniquely determine, and the coordinate uniquely <coughs> determine x, and also algebraically, because the isomorphism is really representing x. Okay, so there's no loss of information. All the algebraic structures are there. Okay, so so this means that if you look at the first coordinates, it could be either a perfect square or not a perfect square. And if you look at second coordinates. It could be a perfect square and not a perfect square, right? Because uh, we knew that from this particular case, all numbers are either perfect square or not perfect square. So which means that uh, when I take Chinese remainder theorem in this domain, that each of our coordinates are either perfect square or not perfect square. Okay. So the first question you may ask: Who are the perfect square here? And exactly what do you think? If x is a perfect square, x mod n, p is a perfect square, and then x mod q is a perfect square. There's no other way. Because this isomorphism literally said that. If x is a perfect square, suppose x equal to y square mod n. So this implies that x mod p is equal to y square mod n. And also x mod q. Right? So which means a number is a perfect square mod n, n is epq, if and only if they are perfect square against all the components, uh, there's two prime components. Okay, this is a perfect square. So so the first question, I'm just want you to mentally this thing through. And also, it gives you a chance to think through Chinese remainder theorem. Is that what fraction of this is a perfect square? What a fraction so 
The one that's fraction of this is a perfect square. I just made that statement, right? A perfect square has to be perfect square mod p and a perfect square mod q. What a fraction of z n star is perfect square? Fifty percent. Very close. Not fifty. Try one more time. Your your intuition is right. You just somehow this never come out. Your mouth is wrong. <laughs> I only use a fraction, so we don't. There's no the fraction, right? Because I knew half of a number mod p is perfect square, half a number mod q is perfect square. But for a number mod n is perfect square, it has to be simultaneously perfect square mod p or mod q. Forty-five percent. Huh? Forty-five percent. Very good. That's 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 number actually in your head, right? A quarter. Yeah. A quarter. But doesn't that come what we said earlier that? Because, so, 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 so let's just uh, think about this table. So, so, right? So, so, so if you think about this table, suppose you can put the, all the QR of P here, and NQR of P here, and QR of Q here, and QNR of Q here, right? If you look at it here, this is your perfect square, right? Mod n. <coughs> because, so this is why the Chinese re remainder theorem structurally is very clean to, to us, this, right? Because we said the piece, the n star looks just like this. And I permuted my coordinates, really make no difference. My number just permuted. So let's just permute all the perfect square up and all the perfect square here. Then clearly this is your only perfect square, right? So what's the fraction? Well, um, what's Q and R? <laughs> uh, uh, quadratic non-residue, uh, non-perfect square. Okay. Yeah, so that's why the, uh, I, I write that bar down here. Uh, I like the word is perfect square. Somehow, I knew it's fancy to say the other way. I, uh, perfect square has special meaning in my hand. <laughs> perfect square is, yeah. Perfect square, right? That's what we learned from, from Gattigo. So. Uh, agree, right? So, so, so this means 25 percent. Right. So just, 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 just poke a fun. Suppose n is equal to p q r of three primes. How many perfect square are left? Huh? It's eight percent. And then uh, uh, one over two, uh, one over two to the Eight. And one or two or three. Sorry. Two to eight. One or two to three. Right? So 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 you can see what you build is really build this table, right? So Chinese remainder theorem will give you this uh, high dimensional representation of number. And uh, and if if you half every coordinate your perfect square basically as a volume geometrically. So, so this is uh, consistent with our notion that when you eventually went to integer, you don't have nearly as many perfect squares anymore. Right? As, as number goes on, you somehow lose the perfect square. But from modular arithmetic, periodically you have a lot of perfect square, right? Because against every prime, you, you suddenly have half a perfect square. And uh, the more factors you have, the less perfect square you have. Right? Because uh, in each other dimension, you lose your perfect square. Right? The density of perfect square against prime is perfect, is half, 50%. Otherwise, you actually lose something, right? So, so this is really the, uh, I think, uh, one, of, one of the quite clean illustration of Chinese remainder theorem, right? It gives you somehow a geometric representation of numbers and allow us to answer the question even like this, right? Say more. Okay. So, so clearly there are still three 25% is uh, only one of four of the regions, right? So you have, so basically, if you look at any numbers, mod n, it has four cases now, right? If n is a pr uh, product of two prime. They're perfect square, or they're perfect, uh, they're not perfect square against neither of p and q, which means on this diagonal. 
And then they have this mixture representation. I'm perfect square against P, but not perfect square against Q. And perfect square against Q, not perfect square against P. Right. So if I did the pure representation, yes, yes, no, no. Yes, no, yes. No, yes. OK? And uh, so, so, so one of the first number theoretical questions that related with this and actually heavily become useful in cryptography is basically try to figure out uh, which pairs of those blocks are indistinguishable against polynomial time. Or do we know any algorithm to tell them apart? Right, so suppose I give you a number here, I give you a number here, can you tell them apart in polynomial time? I give you a number here, I give you a number here, can you tell them apart? We don't know in PQ. Right? So you can see, once I have PQ, I have a clean representation of every number, because I can just use Euler's formula to evaluate everywhere. Right? But on top of that, I couldn't. Right? So this is where this Jacobi symbol is actually quite powerful. Right, that's why I actually sent out that image today, at least to let you know. Jacobi symbol, even though you don't care, I don't care over this so far, it at least can be computed in polynomial time. Today I need to illustrate the ones, and I will never look into it again. Okay? So what is Jacobi symbol? <laughs> Jacobi symbol will be x of m, right? So this is a Jacobi symbol. Or I usually need to write that as xm. So what is Jacobi symbol? It's equal to the uh, 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 the Jacobi symbol or Legendre symbol of x of p and x and q, right? So that by Chinese remainder theorem or by, by the definition, right? So it's really the Jacobi symbol against each of those, and uh, so this one will just be equal to x p minus 1 over 2 mod p, and this will be x q minus 1 mod 2 mod q, uh, over 2 mod q, right? So this is the, uh, the Jacobi symbol if you, you know the, mod, uh, the p and q, right? Uh, but the one thing we learn is that according to Euler's formula, can you see? Or I need to lift it up. Oh, I can't lift up this board. x p minus 1 over 2. What we are teaching in the other classroom uh, is can go up x q minus one over two mod q, right? So this is equal to this this thing. So one thing we knew from Euler's formulas: this is plus minus one. This is plus minus one, right? Plus means what? Perfect square. Minus one means not perfect square, right? So, so which means that when I run the Jacobi symbol, I can only take for uh, uh, two different values again, either plus one or minus one, right? So, so who are my plus one? Where the Jacobi symbol become plus one? And you guys can see this is a block, right? So here means all the perfect squares mod p, all the perfect square mod q, not, not, right? So, so what is the Jacobi symbol here? One, right? What is the Jacobi symbol here? Also one. one. What is the Jacobi symbol here? Negative one. Negative one, right? So this means that using Jacobi symbol, I can tell the off diagonal away from diagonal. Right? Which means in polynomial time, according to the table I hand out to you, that uh, we can, de if I give a number here and here, I can tell they are not from same quadrant. So that's why computationally, it has a, a beaut become beautiful question. So if I give a number here and here, can you tell them apart? So this is the conjecture or assumption of a use in cryptography. That is, uh, if I give you a mod P and Q, I don't know PQ. If I give you a number, suppose I first run Jacobi symbol, if negative one, I don't care. Let's throw it away. I only worry about numbers with Jacobi symbol one. Can you tell whether they are perfect square 
what often we call pseudo perfect square, the fake perfect square, right? Because they fooled the Jacobi test, right? And uh, so this is a property so far. No one know how to solve in quantum world. It could be one day. In quantum world, you can solve this in quantum world. Okay? But in classical world, so far, no one knows how to solve this one in polynomial time. Actually, so far, no one can solve this with a better than 50% over a polynomial part, <coughs> one polynomial part, right? So this, in some sense, provides us another encoding of 0, 1. So we can treat this as 0, this as a 1. That's encoding. So this provides us another way to encode 0, 1. And since nobody can, so far can tell them apart, the world is colorblind. <laughs> Suppose you treat this as red and this as green. Nobody can tell red and green apart. I, don't, I hope we don't have any colorblind here. <laughs> I, once I was sitting in a car with a friend. He couldn't tell red from green. And gosh, that driving is not very smooth. <laughs> I mean, he has some other cues of the light changing. And, and, and it's kind of scary sometimes. You know, he just said, I, I, I said, why don't you stop? All, I stop, stop. Normally, I'm not a backseat driver. And then he just said, sometimes I couldn't tell the color. And what happened? He said, I'm colorblind. <laughs> so, uh, so this is a, the basic math I want to keep in your mind. Because this is another domain of possibly beautiful encoding of zero and one, and I will repeat this, and because this will become a very useful representation for us. Okay, and I really want you to think of them as colorblind, because encryption is about find the right colors to make everyone colorblind. If everyone is colorblind, if you are not, you can read, and nobody else can. That is called probabilistic encryption, okay? That is the ultimate encryption of bits. Every bit is written in a colorblind manner. You're not colorblind, you can read. That's the one who created the key. Everybody else is colorblind. That's why you can't read, okay? So that's really the picture I want to put in your head, okay? So I will also send out an email today about uh, signing up for the, uh, the